Well then, just a short video about this skid steer, just in case anyone's ever interested in what one of these machines looks like. Uh, this is a case 1529, built in approximately 1971 in Casey's France factory, according to the VIN plate. Uh, at least the fleur de lis on it seems to indicate it was made in France. Um, it's fitted with a Ruston Hornsby <coughs> 2 YWA twin cylinder air cooled direct injection engine. Uh, unique to Britain, as far as I'm aware. If you had been elsewhere in the world, America, etc., if you'd wanted a diesel for this vehicle, you would have been given a 26 horsepower Deutz engine. And I rather suspect from the remains of other mountings and a cut cross beam on either side that the frames were made as usual for the Deutz engine. And then if it was coming to the UK, they lopped the Deutz mountings out and fitted this. It has its own little subframe at the back, which I've just painted silver when I put it back in. Uh, I got this vehicle as scrap uh, because the previous Russian engine was seized. The previous exhaust was upright, no cap. When I found it, there was about two, three inches of moss in each cylinder. I did manage to get one cylinder unstuck, but the other one is still seized, even after six months of diesel. Um, I will get it apart eventually, but I have to get the bottom chest side off so I can get the rod off so I can lift the um, barrel and sort the piston out complete. Um, yes, yeah, so what is a 1529? Well, US people will be more familiar with the 1530, 1530B, etc. Uh, they, I believe, had, for the most part, Wisconsin V4 petrol engines. Um, they were built in, well, the design was at least from Ford's Germany Cologne factory as that engine found its way into some cars as well. Um, rated for 1,500 pounds of lift, hence the prefix on the model name. Uh, this is pretty worn out. I merely bought it for hauling bales around on the farm. Uh, so, as you can see, there is now a different engine, uh, although the same type. Uh, as I will show in, the, in a few minutes, I've been adjusting the clutches as I've finally got it working. Uh, but it all functions. It's not the fastest thing in the world. It's not the most modern thing in the world. But uh, nor would I expect it to be for its age. Uh, the tyres are a bit of a pain to find as they are only 15 inch rather than 16.5 as most larger modern uh, skid steers are. The uh, width is 5 feet so it's a standard sort of size even today. Um, chain driven in the sides. The actual drive mechanism is a, if the light will allow, a large 2 inch belt driven originally by, and you won't be able to see that, a hydraulically variable sheaf. This was another little present left for me by the person who had it before. Um, there was a rotating fitting on that, obviously allowing hydraulic fluid to flow in and out to adjust the width of the sheaf and to adjust the gearing ratio. Uh, they'd smashed it off with a hammer, leaving the remains of the fitting inside the pulley. Um, I've made a frame which has allowed me to set the speed so I can't adjust it on the move but again I'm not in a hurry this is literally for moving round bales such as that around the farm. Um, that's sort of it for an introduction. Uh, temporary fuel tank with it being sat for anywhere between 10 to 15 years the fuel was absolutely disgusting that came out and I can't get any fuel drawn from the original fitting so I assume they're clogged 
There is no way into the tanks, which is a bit of a pain, uh, as they are welded up and all the fittings are welded in. Uh, so for now, a gallon seems to last around an hour, which is perfectly adequate for my purposes. Um, the air cleaner originally had a frame across here, which has been taken out at some point and welded in back in very badly, as in I just broke that off by hand. Uh, I removed it completely as the engine I got came with its own heavy duty oil bath air filter, uh, so that was no longer required. Uh, again, another little present, someone's bent. They've obviously got something caught between the frame and the arms and it's bent the hard lines up. They seem to be fine, I've had no leaks so far in the hydraulic sense. Um, obviously this time when I've done it, we have a crossways exhaust which actually tapers downwards, if anything, so that we don't have any leakage. Uh, we have decompression on both cylinders to aid starting. And in fact, I think we will start it in a moment. <coughs> it came with a five foot bucket of its own kind. Uh, fairly simple, there's a box section on the headstock held in by two pins. It didn't actually come with pins, I made these out of some 32 millimeter pin stock. Uh, it's fairly worn out, but again, perfectly adequate for my purposes. I'll just get the starting implement. I'll just put the camera down here as well. Without knocking all the spanners over. here for anyone who's never been inside one of these things is a pair of multi friction pack clutch packs uh, these are actually form sprag types um, there was an option on this machine to have a different type called a Stearns clutch pack which is just different kinds of friction material and the springs uh, basically how this works is we have a control lever here for the right hand side uh, Tilt left and right is our bucket control. To go forwards, we push forwards, which operates these rods. And contrary to what you might think, this actually moves the cam on the rear clutch pack, engaging it. I don't know if we can see there. Might not be enough light to watch you compressing and decompressing. And then when we press backwards, we can see that it squeezes those. Uh, this is very, very slack because as you can see, especially forwards, I have to move a good two inches before anything actually happens. Uh, so the way we can adjust the slack on these things is we have a pair of grub screws on each nose piece and there's an internal thread and four stop points allowing two positions per rotation and what we can do according to the manual if we feel it needs a major tightening we can move these 180 degrees 
or for a minor adjustment, we can move them 90 degrees, tightening conventional thread. Um, we want a fairly major tightening, so I'm going to move it 180 degrees. Um, yeah, just thought I'd show this to anyone who has never seen inside one of these things before. Uh, it is all clockwork, a lot of the large chains. And a large bath, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, a bath of oil, which is our hydraulic oil at the bottom. Uh, and just levers, nothing much to go wrong uh, hydraulically. The only hydraulics on the machine operate the booms. Uh, right, so I've now adjusted these as much as I dare. Uh, off camera, because you do need two hands, really. Uh, as I said, this front one, which is actually the rear, has been moved to notches, so 180 degrees. I've done the same with this one. They've moved slightly because these spindles do move. Um, look at the lever now. It's hard to convey over the camera, but there is now resistance much sooner. And if we go down below, as soon as we move, sorry, the one. As soon as we move the lever, we have a reaction from the clutch packs. This front clutch, i.e. the forward motion clutch, which is ironically the rear clutch, uh, if you can see, seems to be quite closely packed compared to the front, which is the rear. Uh, this, I am assuming, is because the clutch plates themselves, the friction plates are fairly worn, so there's not a lot I can do about that. Uh, I am going to have to see if I can find some replacements. Uh, I've been a bit hit and miss with this machine as to finding spares. Case do have a few bits, but generally if it only overlaps with other machinery, so they've kept it around, uh, more specific parts. Haven't really had a lot of luck, um, such as the drive belt for the main drive. Uh, I did have to get that from the United States uh, company in Kansas, as uh, Case Europe no longer stocks them. So I'll pop the lid back on and switch it in it. So I've just been for a test run with the skids here after having done the clutches on the other side, and uh, yes, we now appear to have equal travel on the, the levers, which is good. Uh, just played around with the bale a bit, just made sure everything was still working, which it is. One thing I would mention, and it's not just for this machine, you really must remember, as I, as I obviously didn't, that uh, without a substantial bucket, such as that, or a decent amount of weight on the front of these things, they're extremely rear end heavy. Uh, as I forgot and, and somewhat scared myself as it uh, reared backwards. Uh, I'm sure it wasn't any real amount, but uh, it's enough to unsettle you. Um, but yes, as I can show you here, that's full right and that's full left, which is a lot more equal than it was. Uh, as I mentioned when I was redoing the clutch however I don't think there's any real adjustment left in that right hand side so uh, if it uh, comes slack again I think I am going to have to find some friction discs for that but yes as I say this was just a little little video to show you how one of these things works in one particular way just in case anyone finds one and wants to know how to to recommission it because as I say it's very very simple as I said before the biggest limiting factor is probably going to be parts availability for the clutches and things like that in years to come but uh, other than that it seems to be working for now uh, no doubt when I get it out again one day you'll see there's a mount on the front I'll uh, I have a little video of it working, but uh, yes, that'll probably do it for now. Oh, one thing I was going to mention, the uh, as you'll have seen on the previous video, there was a bit of uh, a water contamination in the hydraulic oil. Uh, that's pretty minor to what it was when I first got it. It was uh, basically looked like milk, 
so this is actually its second set of hydraulic oil with a diesel clean in between as per the manual to try and remove water but obviously it uh, recommends when you do a diesel flush not to operate the cylinders uh, because for obvious reasons they don't want you to get diesel into the cylinder seals um, so unfortunately there was still a bit of uh, creamy white oil in the cylinders which is obviously recirculated back into the uh, into the fresh oil so another couple of changes and I'm changing the hydraulic filter every time which, just for information is that little dome down there that's your hydraulic filter uh, you just have to take the seat panel off which I've made but there is a seat panel there usually as well made out of steel to change that and that also gives you access to your gearbox fill and most of this spool vac, but basically everything. The only other thing that's helpful is removing this floor, um, which as you can see I've had repainted and shot blasted, uh, which reveals the battery underneath and the front view of the gearbox, which you do need if you are taking the gearbox and or belt off, you do need that wiggle room. Although to be fair, given how simple the whole thing is, you take this off and you just pop the engine out the engine comes out with six bolts um, what I do is I've got the I rebuilt the prop shaft and it is a infinite spline type so there is no stops on it so all I've done is marked each half of the prop uh, so I keep each half on each component so half on the gearbox half on the engine pull it out line them back up again when you put it back in and that's by far the easiest thing right, rather than trying to do up a lot of fiddly little uh, a lot of fiddly little prop shaft bolts but yes once again that'll do for now i'll put up some more videos soon